And welcome back to our beautiful city. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Farthest Frontier. This game's getting a lot more enjoyable as we're now starting to get further into some of the things that we can build, entering the Tier 2 era, and starting to upgrade some of our homes. Hey, we got our first homestead over here. Oh yeah, just like at the last episode, I did say that that school would probably make a major difference to some of the uh, buildings in town. And boy, did it ever. Oh, yeah, they're upgrading like crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks like there's also uh, a few houses that need uh, the waste cleanup. And here comes the guy with the... Oh, with the wheelbarrow now to clean those up. That should help to increase the desirability of the neighborhood and a few other spots. That's what, yeah, third home just upgraded. Yeah, perfect. All right, so that means we are now... Oh, four. Four out of 25 homesteads have been upgraded in order to uh, unlock the Tier 3. We also then need to build ourselves a trading post and get a population to 125. Whoa, that fire is big. Don't worry, the uh, townsfolk are immediately starting to work on it. I love that. Everybody comes to help out when there's a fire. No dedicated fire building or police department for what I've seen in the game. So it's nice to see people just getting uh, to it to get the job done. I love this game for, uh, you know, random townsfolk to just do a job in order to save the town. And the same with farming. Like the farmers just jumping into whatever jobs needed clear a field in order to, uh, you know, continue to expand upon the farming operation. A few more people just moved into town. We're at 61 out of 84 people. Let's take a look at the number of laborers. We've got nine with a few people on construction. Not bad. We'll kind of continue to wait for the population to grow as we get a little bit of uh, room for expansion, at least in terms of our population. More and more people moving into the city. Good sign. Looks like we made a lot of planks, too. I think we can shut down this extra... Gonna shut down this extra saw pit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, uh, let's see what happens if we pause the building, right? Uh, let's see, toggle building production, yeah. So if we hit that building, it basically just lets everybody off for the season and we can turn that back on anytime. Well, good to see you all back. Thanks again for subscribing to the channel, smashing like. There is a myriad, a massive amount of information on this game on the channel. So make sure you check that out for more information on farming. If you're thinking about getting in it, into it yourself, we'll be having uh, tutorials on, uh, again, farming and military and trade and uh, basic building techniques. And, of course, this series itself serving as a good what to do and what not to do as we continue to kind of explore and see all the differences of the game. And uh, I think this Lake District is probably amongst the, not only the most beautiful to build in, I mean, look at how gorgeous the shoreline looks, really looks realistic. If you've ever spent any time near a lake, you can kind of see all the, you know, the trees and the bushes and the um, shoreline that's really, really grown up. And uh, a lot of uh, shorelines are like that. So looking great and a wonderful game. Happy to be back. Crops ready for assignment. Hmm. Well, we've got more clay-like soil here. Uh, what are we growing in the other areas? That's right, we were growing cabbage over here. More cabbage over here. Uh, may, uh, let's see, we can't really do wheat until we've got a windmill up. Can't really do a windmill until we've got trade up because we need to buy heavy tools. Uh, that's the only way to build a windmill is to buy heavy tools that uh, can be installed, like heavy machinery inside the windmill in order to do some of the jobs for that one. So we could start construction on it, but we won't be able to finish. We could start doing flax, which would allow us to start making clothing soon. And that would get us more money at the shop. So, uh, oh, they've already started. Uh, yeah, rem remove this, please. I would like you to, well, there's a little bit of resistance to frost for uh, flax. So let's try to do, yeah, let's, you know what? Let's just, let's just risk it. Yep. Perfect. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that then. We'll do two seasons of crop, uh, flax crop and see how that goes. And uh, worst case scenario, we'll store it. And I think flax lasts for an incredibly long amount of time. We don't really have to worry about that crop going bad for a while. I think eventually it will kind of spoil and whatnot and wither. Uh, but we can get away with it for a long time. All right, let's see if we can actually make that building too. Resources. Uh, weaver should be around here somewhere. Oh, candle shop. All right, we can start with that. There's our weaver. 80 wood to build that building. A little spendy. A little spendy for now, but uh, definitely something that's possible to do very soon. Soon. Right, let's cut down some more trees now. I'll go ahead and make the request to cut down some trees here and do here as we continue our march north to explore more territory up here as well. I guess we'll cut down a few more trees there too. Anywhere and everywhere we can cut down trees, we can take a few here and there. There we go. And of course, logs equal firewood and planks. 
And it looks like we've got ourselves a good amount of firewood, but not enough planks. We, we still need more and more planks. Uh, let's see. But I don't want to add more people to the lumber mill now because, of course, that'll take too much of our uh, too much of our supply. Some beans and some smoked meat going bad at the marketplace, but that's fine. Spoilage is always going to be happening no matter what. We don't have refrigerators, so even if we have barrels and jarring and... Uh, you know, salted foods and other things, which I don't think we can do that in this game, salting yet, um, but would be interesting to see. Again, remember, in this game, by the way, Tier 3 is the furthest available in this pre-early access version that the developers have given me access to. So there's talk of a Tier 4 and Tier 5 building, so there could again be, like, you know, stone mines and things like that that we just haven't seen, but for a game that's er pre-early access at the moment that we have access to it, and for a game that when it enters early access will still have... <laughs> Tons and tons of content. It's pretty impressive, honestly. Oh, building storage is full for the smokehouse. Uh, we should have a root cellar nearby. Probably build one of those. Yeah, we should build another root cellar up here. So the marketplace can collect from the north and the south for root cellars and one more for the farms. I think a dedicated cellar for the farms is a good idea. And we'll also build a granary for grain whenever we start... Uh, growing wheat. All right, let's go the, with the root cellar. And we could probably build that somewhere nearby. Hmm. Let's see. We will build that right here. And we'll build, build a little road to it, too. Some of the buildings don't actually need access directly to a road. Some of them do need to be connected via road. But others you can put, like, off of a road. Like, over in the woods or something like that is kind of like a, I don't know, far away storage, but still near a road. Good idea, though, to uh, connect everything via road because, of course, your people will walk faster that way. And also the wagons will travel, travel faster, too, especially if you upgrade your roadways to stone, which I believe we could do, too. Yeah, we can start upgrading the roads in the town. Let's do it. 152 stone. It's a good idea. Hold on. We got a predator sighted. Oh, my God. Our first bear. Oh, boy. This is the first time I'm seeing a bear in this game. Oh, my God. Bear attack. Are right, we going to get everyone gathered together. Wow, that bear is rolling. Look at that. Look at how fast that bear is. Right, we're going to have to give this guy an order to bail. Everybody attack the bear. And Nivered is going to have to keep booking it. Woo! We did it, boys. Damn, that was close. I was trying to get him away from the squad, but nicely done. All right. Well, now we got that as a threat. That was a hell of a lot of um, damage that that bear took. We're probably going to need to build some towers then to defend the town. Uh, I don't see a bear spawn point. He must have wandered in somewhere. Yeah. I don't see where the bears actually, like, have a den. So, okay. Well, that was an interesting turn of events, wasn't it? <sighs> no surprise here, though, in Raptori to see something like that happen. All right, we're going to turn this building back on. Let's get a few more people working. We have uh, eight laborers, so we still got to wait for that population to go up. And we still can uh, continuously upgrade our houses. So let's see. A few of the houses have upgraded. And a few houses' desirability is a little low, but that's okay. We can add some more decor in order to increase the uh, happiness of the townsfolk. We have a medium garden we could plop down. But it wouldn't affect too many of the homes. Just a few of them. Let's see. So, so a lot of them are at like 29, 20, 23. I think maybe we'll build a garden over here. Honestly, it's not so expensive either. So I think we'll build a garden here. 
I think there needs to be a way to, in order to uh, change the design of the garden. Um, whenever you select it, it's randomly selected, so there's like multiple different designs for it. I, I, there must be a hotkey to cycle through which particular design that you'd like, and that would be nice. Let's add some gardens here. As you can see, the small gardens kind of change their design and layout. We'll build all of those and see which ones we like the best. All right. And of course, we could add other buildings too to increase desirability, such as the... Uh, we don't necessarily need to build decorative buildings. We could go with uh, the healer's hut now. And also, I believe if we build a pub nearby, even though we can't really operate it, we might be able to uh, get away with that. Oh, look at that. The healer's hut would do a massive amount of good for the town. Now, let's build that right here. Wow, look, look at the uh, happiness increase. Look, that, that's great. All right, cool. All right, this, this house is only at 13%, uh, even though they've got, like, a park and stuff nearby. I guess they're m a little bit about out of the range of the market, but no, that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, the shrine. The shrine and the market and the school giving a massive boost to the center of town, and now the healer's hut, too. Um, so that'll be good, and it'll give us a little disease prevention. So we'll see more houses now hitting the Tier 2 goal. And let's go back to housing and build a few more houses, then. We do need to get that population up, and building those houses next to the school is a good idea. There we go. All right. It'll take a lot of materials over time, but that's okay. A lot of the land still needs to be cleared from trees and such, too. But, man, doesn't that school look cool on the top of the hill like that with the uh, spire for the uh, bell? Beautiful. Gorgeous. Bell tower looking good. All right, how are we doing here? 63 out of 84. Population, very, very happy. About a year's worth of food and storage. Yeah, numbers are all looking good across the board. Lots of clay stored up. More farm fields about to be ready. We'll mess with these uh, in the spring because these are, even if these are ready now, we're not going to be able to plant anything until next year. All right, look at those houses go. Oh, yep, crops ready for assignment. Yeah, we'll do it now before I forget. I'm uh, expecting this field to be done by the spring, too, but maybe it'll be a little late. Uh, let's see, let's do a... We could do buckwheat. Oh, nine people want to immigrate to the town. Welcome aboard, absolutely. Wow, nine people, that's a lot, man. Let's do field maintenance, then buckwheat. Replenishment, and then buckwheat. Buckwheat has no frost resistance, so we need to do it a little later in the spring. And then we'll do something like turnips and buckwheat. It's a good idea to kind of like diversify when you can, but it's also another good idea to try to fit as many different crops in there as you can. Although sometimes it's a good idea to specialize, like for example with the flax field, so that way we can kind of keep an eye on how much one field is producing, if that's the crop that is producing all the time. You can always rotate with field maintenance and clover, so you could do one year of f double flax, then maintenance and clover, and then another year of double flax. And then that means the next year will be flax again, which I'm not sure how close that is to taking um, too much of the uh, nutrients from the field. I don't know if you can get away with like doing uh, you know, two years of the same crop, but also, you're not going to be as productive if you do the other thing of maintenance all the time, because then you're not going to be growing anything. If you had four years to manage, then it would be nice, because then you could do one year maintenance, one year crops, one year maintenance, one year crops, and keep rotating that. So it would be nice to see three tiers there. There'll be more videos, too, on the way, on the way for uh, tutorials on farming, if you're interested. All right, looks like the gardens are looking nice. The cool thing about this is when the gardens are done, there doesn't look to be much here, and it kind of looks boring. But eventually, plants will grow in here, and the plants that are here will grow much bigger. And also, these are good for the bees. So not only are we adding desirability to the town, but when we build an apiary, which probably should be now, uh, we can go ahead and store all that stuff up. Beeswax and honey lasts forever, and we can start using it at the candlestick maker anytime. In fact, this candlestick maker has a lot of employees for it, so build a new school to set the town apart from other small villages. Way ahead of you, Chief.
We got it done. All right, so yeah, the candlestick maker can, uh, I think, get up to six employees. So when you start with two, it's enough for one apiary. But I think it's like per apiary, so long as you've got it over like 80%, you can then do, uh, you know, one apiary per two employees until you need to build another one. All right, let's go to resources, I think it is. Yep, there's the beehive right there. Ah, 64%, not bad. 82% if we put an apiary next to the market. Great idea. And of course, the bees uh, cannot overlap each other, otherwise there'll be a debuff. We'll build a little apiary building there. And we can build another one, and keep in mind that if this is like at, for example, 78% or whatnot, or 82, uh, we can always add more decorations to increase those numbers as well. But this will give us an alternative food source. And we can also build it up by the farms, too. That'll give us a bonus. Wow, look at that. Building up here is at 70, 80%. Oh, building back here is a 73%. Not bad. We'll go with one there. Oh, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. 74% is pretty good. 75 or higher is really where you want it. It's just a bonus, though, so... And we'll try to get another one down here. We'll start with two, and that will provide honey for the market, and then we can start making candlesticks, which will further increase our income from 33 to even higher numbers. Well, it might be time for us to start thinking about... <laughs> oh, sorry, is that a curse? No. It might be time to start thinking about building the trading post. I know, trade. Sometimes I'm allergic to it, but I think we'll be okay. I know. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. I thought, I thought I had something coming on there. No, three new villagers have immigrated to the town. We're okay. We're okay. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, sometimes I'm allergic to like uh, trade and stuff in these games for a while. Impending blizzard. Ooh, hold on a second. Temperatures are dropping as a severe winter storm approaches. Hopefully your town is well stocked with firewood as colder temperatures require villagers to burn more wood. Heavy snow can cause damage to buildings. All right, so we'll have a little bit of extra maintenance to do and a little extra firewood consumption. So let's put somebody on another person on firewood production. And that'll gobble up a few more of our logs. Let's see what we can do for... Uh, let's see, where were we going to put our trade depot. I believe that's under... Is that under storage? No, actually, it's under amenities and services. And there's our trading post. Oh, wow, we could build that building right here. Might be a good idea to build here, too, because we can keep an eye on it. One of the things that's not really present in the game as of just yet is... Uh, a good notification system to let you know when the trader has somebody arriving. You'll have to kind of pay attention to see if you can see the trader's wagon in the town, in the town streets, or pulling up to the actual trade depot itself. So you kind of have to like pay attention to those types of things. Well, we built our storehouse over here, and we have several uh, depots and things over there. So let's build our trade depot maybe over here. I think we'll build it here. Kind of separate from the town hall, but we'll make nice areas for parks and things like that too. And uh, add some more ho houses here. Yeah, it'll keep uh, the area clear for the uh, town to continuously add new people. New houses, I should say. 78 out of 92. Ooh, and there comes the snow. And that is some rough snow. Look at how good that looks. That's amazingly good looking snow, man. Looking thick. Love it. Very, very good. Maybe we should add a park behind the school. Playground for the kids, but also would uh, do a good job of adding more desirability to the town. In fact, look at that. A park up here would affect everybody in the town. That would be awesome. I think we do have to build that one. Yep. Oh, the music's so nice. 
going to be very spendy, but increasing that desirability, especially with a large effect like that, is really important. Oh, the music's so good. Very nice. We'll build some more of the town up on the top of the hill, and in fact, where the school is, is still a good area to continuously build extra service buildings. Like, for example, uh, we could build a pub here at the other end of the street, and we could build another pub down here. We could actually have two pubs, but that'll take a little while till we get there. Of course, we'll have to start uh, having beer and stuff come into the town. We'll have to start growing wheat and then have a brewery, and that's not unlocked till Tier 4. We could import those things, but it's uh, much more... Uh, profitable to make it yourself, of course. Alright. And the park's getting built, too. The blizzard is over for now. Healer's Hut only needs six planks remaining to uh, be delivered before construction starts. Man, I love the look of this town. Such a great, like, old city that you can build, you know, before cars ruined everything. Beautiful. Get rid of these old trees for some nice new trees. And a little park, too. We'll see how they lay that out. Adding desirability to the town. Very nice. All right, how many houses are at Tier 2 now? Eight. Eight out of 25. So we're getting halfway there. We're getting there. Almost there. Halfway point is pretty good because once you've reached the halfway point, essentially it's typical that you're building your service buildings in the middle and like I mentioned you know with the large catch area around these buildings you'll have half the town covered by it then you just need to build the other half behind it so the, the first part is kind of the hardest the second part is just mm, could be just as hard to finding out where to put all those extra houses and in this case we're just gonna have to put them in the forest behind and uh, eventually we'll have to we'll have to leave some of these trees for sure cutting down all the trees remember will remove some of the uh, soil's ability to maintain water and whatnot, so uh, having no water in the town because it's all dried up because of no tree coverage and evaporation, bad times. It's going to be bad times. We don't want to have bad times. We only want to have mandatory good times. You know what I mean? That's right. All right, 104 population is our limit now. 78 is our current population. Oh, good. A lot of laborers now. All right. Well, we could try to generate some extra cash by building that candlestick maker. So if we go to resources, we could build a candle shop. And the candle shop doesn't seem to produce any sort of pollution, really, that the people don't want to be in near or around. So that's okay. We could build, like, an artisan district up here as well. So things like glass makers and candlestick makers and weavers. Uh, Low-impact industry which could also be near the supply of the storehouse just down the street, right down there. So, oh, okay. Let's do that. We'll build our candlestick maker here. We'll build a road that reaches around the back. And then, uh, yeah, it should be pretty good. All right, 500 gold there, a couple gold there. Got 247, good income coming in. It's great. Um, oh, only 44 beans going bad, not bad. All the houses seem to be under coverage of the market. And I believe the school, too. And we just need a builder to come over for the healer's house. And there he is. Love that, man. Baskets are so important in this game. I didn't realize it until a little later, but your people's ability to carry more things is just great. Less trips. Hey, look at that healer building. Very nice. And that should further increase the desirability. Alright, so now the only other thing is for some of these homes that haven't upgraded it's not necessarily the desirability, it's food variety. I mentioned that before. Three new immigrants, great. Taxes being collected, good. Good, good, good. Alright, so yes. Um, one of the important things we're going to have to deal with now is food variety. So as these fields continue to get built, we're going to have to make sure we kind of diversify each of the available foods for the beginning, middle, and end of the year as, as best we can. I don't think things like, for example, um, hunted meat, like wolf, bear, or in most cases deer, and possibly boar, all just counts as meat. So even though we could, you know, hunt different animals, it still just counts as a protein, same as fish. So um, fish and meat are just protein, basically, even though they're, you know, obviously different. 
So we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. Oh, the gardens look nice. Oh, look at that. I want That's got to be a good spot for the bees. As those grow up, that could provide more and more of a bonus, yeah. As that uh, little garden matures a little bit. Okay, cool. Oh, and the park is looking nice, too. Yearly taxes have been collected. Wonderful. Looking good. Clay pit bringing in quite a bit of clay. Another farm field almost ready. Probably by the end of the next year. End of this year. Alright, let's keep cutting down trees. We got more stones indicated to be cut down there. I think we're going to try to leave the spruce alone as much as we can. That should be good there. Yeah, we're going to try to leave as many of these trees behind us as possible. Could be a nice, good opportunity to log over here. We could build a work camp over there and a shelter to keep everybody over on that side housed. And again, shelters kind of work as a temporary ho housing where their happiness is based on the house that they actually live in. And the temporary shelter is just something that they uh, kind of like uh, are able to sleep in and spawn from, essentially. Oh, we got lots of something here. Oh, desirability dropped down by a little bit. Really? Desirability here is being a little bit of a pain. Let's make sure we don't lose that house. One of the things that I've noticed in this game is if a house becomes abandoned because the class that lives there, in this case the homestead, if they walk out, uh, you can, you, you'll have to... A house doesn't, like, downgrade and start over. You have to, like, demolish the house and then build, like, a shack again in order for the people to then take it upon themselves to upgrade again, which is a little weird. Um, maybe we can increase some of the desirability just by building a few uh, shrubs here and there. What do we got here? Small shrubs, small garden. Garden trail. I feel like I want to build the trail. A nice little walk along the, the lake. There we go. And should increase that corner house's desirability, too. That little plaza here to the end. There we go. So some of these trees near the edge of the lake, I don't think we can actually cut these down ever. But it is nice to actually be able to look out at the lake like that. I don't know. Sometimes when I build these towns in so many different games, I still pretend as if I live there or knew somebody who lived there and try to give them the best... Um, living conditions as we can, but keeping in mind the machine must still continue, the wheel must continue to turn. Alright, 35 timber required for that. Look at this, man. Alright, we gotta incre increase the number of planks. Alright, I didn't realize this has been very effective to build two uh, saw pits. Might be a good idea in future setups to actually build two by default, so that way you can continuously, rapidly increase and then turn down uh, plank production based on when you're building stuff. You usually end up with, you know, anytime that I've looked at my storage for planks, it's like, oh, I got 100, oh, I got 200. But then when each building that you build from there on out requires like, you know, 30, 40, 50, that's about two buildings or so. Um, so it is something that you definitely want to make sure you've got the ability to scale up the production. You can always have a few in storage just in case, but then if you really, really need them, leave a little breathing room so you can up the uh, production so it doesn't slow down other buildings productions or constructions not strange this requires six planks oh they're upgrading to homesteads of course they live right next door oh wow look at that scaffolding just to upgrade the houses oh I didn't realize this houses require materials to upgrade and they take it from our town I didn't realize that I thought that they would just uh, upgrade over overnight or whatever magically and that was it well well the more you know that's good very good indeed all right six planks required there six planks required here 50 and 35 we were right to continue to bop up the plank production we've got eight people now in the logging mills working another farm field ready to go and we're actually early in the season, so let's pick some crops here. Uh, let's see. Leeks. Uh, they don't have much 
frost resistance, do they? They have a great frost resistance. Wonderful. I'm going to try to do leeks to add variety. Let's do field maintenance, clover, and clover again. All right, cool. Yeah, so this is what's great about building multiple small farms rather than like one large farm is that, of course, you could just do so much more rotation that way and uh, it helps you to manage building just a, a much more um, diverse diet for your people, which really helps getting those food types up. As you can see, we're already having trouble just getting two because, you know, carrots are available and then they're not and then let it... Uh, Cabbage is available, then it's not. Then turnips are available, then it's not. So you constantly got to be switching between all the different food types. And, of course, you could make one massive uh, food storage for uh, carrots or something like that. Make a massive carrot farm. But, uh, one, those are going to spoil eventually. And, two, once they all spoil, it's all at the same time. And so, you know, if it's all harvested and eaten by midsummer or goes bad by midsummer, you're going to have a bad time come fall and especially winter. Good thing to keep in mind. All right, well, we've got a great amount of um, gold coming in. That's good. Still, despite all of us, all of the services that we're building. The healer's hut, the school, all the other new buildings for upkeep, and the gold we had to use to build them. But now, the trader is going to be unlocked. That trader is going to be fantastic, especially when we get the candlestick shop up. We we'll probably also get a cobbler up too to start selling shoes, so let's do that. Uh, wait a minute, let's take a look at our labor pool again. 18. Wait till the candle stick shop is up one at a time now. We're building a lot of decorations and we're building a lot of buildings here, so we'll finish up the uh, candle shop and start selling those, and then we'll f probably do a cobbler because the great thing about the cobbler is shoes sell for a pretty damn good amount of money, especially when somebody comes to the shop uh, specifically for that item. They will usually pay a pretty good amount of money, and sometimes that price is even higher. They'll, they'll be willing to pay a higher price. So you have an item that sells for a pretty good amount of money, and then plus a bonus of an extra increased like bonus sell price. That's going to make you a lot of money. And the same with candles. So candles and shoes are really good to go with. Bees constantly produce honey. It's automatic mode. It's easy mode. Bees make it easy, man. And with your hunting and possible, like if you get a, a wolf den or something nearby then that's something you got to worry about. Ah, oh, look at this. Trader already on the way. Beautiful. I love in this game too, by the way, they'll appear from off map. They'll find your road and then they'll take the road into town. It's genius. Very cool. All right, well, we've got a trading uh, post up now. Now this is really, until I kind of learned how this worked, I was very confused. So I'll kind of explain how everything works here as soon as the uh, trader shows up and has something that we can actually trade for. But essentially the way it works is this. The trading post itself is a warehouse. And the warehouse for the trading post is the only place where you can trade items from. And it's also where items are delivered to once you like, for example, buy them. Now typically in this game I'm only selling goods. I rarely buy anything but it's always a good idea to be able to buy like some extra planks or logs or something like that if you need them so everything must be transferred to the trading post in order to be interacted with in the market so if you're looking to buy or looking to sell it all has to be transferred from this building so now you can see the only thing here is that the only thing that happened on the screen is that there's this little green thing here that says a traveling merchant has has arrived and atra of the iron clan fantastic this is great that she's here. She is really, really important because she's the only one who sells the heavy tools that are required for us to be able to uh, make that windmill. All right, so we've got a plenty of fish here. Uh, looks like she'll also buy soap. We haven't been able to make that yet. So things that we're going to have to start making for money, yes. We're going to have to start making soap now. We'll probably build that by the compost heap. We'll have to start our candle ship uh, candle stick shop which is going to be placed behind the trading post we'll also do pottery these are going to be great items to start with and then also we could sell some raw items that we have now and she won't buy that for very much but it would be a good idea for us to buy heavy tools now as it could be a very long time until we see her again with her being the only one to make the heavy tools in fact we should probably buy like two heavy tools because the windmill and eventually the blacksmith shop and such will take that would be ideal to buy three in total, actually. 
All right, well, let's give the order for our uh, merchants to sell stuff here. So we're going to tell them to transfer everything that we have to her. So right now we have 339 logs. So we're going to have to cut down some more trees. Hate to do it, but we're going to have to do it. Let's go with 300 in instead. We'll tell the uh, person here, Beta, to go now and pick those up from other storages. So we're basically tell giving them the order to transfer stuff here. And this is the only items, by the way, that she will uh, buy. Atra of the Iron Clan will only buy these items. So coal, soap, candles, pottery, and logs are the only thing, and, and also as, as well as iron ore. And then the only thing that she's selling is uh, smoked fish, tools, iron, the heavy tools, uh, hauberks, and crude weapons. So those are the only things that we can buy and sell. We can stock other goods here in preparation for the anticipation of a trade, but typically it doesn't work out. All right, let's see. Um, we've got nothing else that she wants, so logs are the only thing that we can trade. We're going to be able to trade for about nine hundo, and that's still going to bring us short. She'll leave in seventy-three days, so we got to try to get that transferred as much or as quickly as possible. So let's hire another person. To double down and the uh, traders also only have a certain amount of gold so you can't get away with selling like three billion dollars worth of firewood if somebody's going to buy it you can't stock an infinite amount of items there they'll buy a little bit of each stock before they run out of cash okay so we're waiting for 300 to hit i'm going to keep this menu open while we kind of look around the town and see everything else get completed all right, four villagers have graduated, and that one abandoned building is there. We'll demo that, and it'll get rebuilt. But hey, now we got four more people in the labor pool, and they're educated now, so that's fantastic. So we should have gone from about 18 to 22, but apparently we're at 17, but it might be because we hired a couple people there. And candlestick maker is a perfect spot for them to go to. All right, 34 out of 300 is there. She's still visiting for two months. 48, 50, yeah, okay, they're bringing in a lot of stuff. The traders, by the way, the people who work at the trading post will bring things over via wheelbarrow. But look at this, people got some hustle in this town, it's awesome. Also, the images I like at the top of the screen, I think represent our city for what we specialize in to the world. So right now, everybody basically thinks of us as kind of like a farmer. I don't know if it works that way, but I'd like to think that us on the left, the worker is like the highest class that we have in the town so maybe it's like farmer or, or some level of worker and then her on the right side she's kind of like a, a warrior or whatnot she's kind of like a, a warrior or a general or something like that uh, so she's got like an axe or a war weapon there there's a tower in the background uh, it would be cool if the background and the people in the image changed kind of based on how you were perceived by the world in your specialty what you're good at you know it'd be interesting if you were very good at glass making if they changed your uh, appearance to kind of look like a somebody wearing like heavy leather gloves and carrying a, a box of like, uh, you know, filled with hay and glass items or something like that. Just be a cool little detail. All right, she's leaving in 46 days. We're still transferring all of that stuff over. Let's do a quick transfer. She's also buying it for less, but it's the only thing we've got. And it would be good to actually at least try to buy one thing. All right, so we still need a lot more logs brought over. Interesting that they're having so much trouble transferring because it should all be right here in this building. There they go. But now we can set the inventory for each and every trade. Now one thing I've noticed too is that there's not a continuous like minimum for this building. Once you set it, they deliver that exact amount of material and then they never bring it again until you reset it. In other words, you can't set like a constant minimum. If you want 100 candles to be in there and you sell 100 candles and the merchant leaves and comes back, you have to make sure you initiate that uh, trade order again so that way they stock it up again. You have to give an order for every time you want it stocked. All right, 162 remaining uh, logs there. We're at 41. The merchant's just arriving to 46, so they can transfer five at a time via the wheelbarrow. Interesting. And they're just grabbing logs randomly. I don't know what causes people to just abandon things on the street like that. I feel like if somebody gets sick or something like that, they just dump whatever and go home. Um, or if they get tired or hungry or something, they might abandon their job. <laughs> it's kind of funny. 
All right. So she's still going to be here for 28 days. We're just we're just going to try to buy one tool. Uh, the there we go. We'll sell 67. The one heavy tool would be a, a life changer for us, at least to build the windmill. We got plenty of time where she could come over too, so um, it's not that big of a deal. All right. Yeah, food stocks are low, but we're okay. All right, let's sell the remaining. 675, we'll buy one heavy tool. Two would cost us 722. Can we can we get it done? Let's transfer another 100 here. We'll let those people keep working. Wouldn't hurt to have wood here. It's not going to be a, a re resource that goes bad. I think, I think anything inside the stockyard, bricks, stone, wood, lumber, I think it all lasts forever. There's not a reason for that to ever go bad. Okay, let's buy two heavy tools if we can. Buy and transfer to town storage, please. All right, well, that takes care of the windmill and takes care of the forge for us. Uh, I think the forge requires heavy tools, so once we get to the iron mining and smelting at the next tier, that should be good. As fast as we're moving, that should be uh, pretty quick to happen. Let's take a look here at the uh, requirements for the forge. Foundry, it is. The foundry does require one heavy tool, and the blacksmith does require one heavy tool as well. And... So we'll need three. So one for the windmill and one for the heavy tools to be built, or rather to be constructed at the foundry and the blacksmith foundry. Cool. All right, she's gonna be departing in three days. Let's go ahead and see if we can sell anything else. 253, I think we'll be a little short, but that's fine. Didn't think she would be exp you know, what's funny is that the wagon was rolling up just as the building was being finished. So it's kind of funny that uh, I guess the game must spawn the wagons once you start construction on it. And if there's no building complete, then they will uh, they'll just kind of like pass through town or leave. All right, that's okay. Not bad for a first run. Hopefully she comes back. What a good trader that was to have on day one of the trading. Massive, massively important that was. Very good. Well, we're broke again, but luckily we're still positive in cash, and we, of course, got lots and lots more um, money to be made with the candlestick maker now. Uh, that's a good thing because the next person who comes in might actually want candles, so we can make a lot of that and sell it at the market, too. And uh, we can start constructing, like, the pub, for example. Let's go ahead and put the pub down. And you can see the effect that has on the town. We can definitely build one on this side and one over here. And it covers most of the town. Now, the pub is not something that we're going to have operating. Once it's built, we're just basically going to mothball it and uh, never touch it again until we can make our own booze. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody who does bring uh, alcohol to the town. But once we upgrade the trade post, once we reach Tier 3, new traders and bigger and better trades will come in, so new items will unlock. I'm going to order all of the town roads to be upgraded to. And all of our free workers are still out there gathering uh, stones. So we're going to have the whole town upgraded stone-wise for stone roads. That's good enough to start. And four more people have entered the town and populations at 90 out of 100. we got to build some more homes. Can't believe it. Well, let's go ahead and order a few more homes to be constructed. We just need 125, so let's go ahead and add for our population. And, of course, for the housing, too, for the uh, multiple homes required. There we go. All right, so we'll add, what, three, six more homes. That should get us to, what are we at now? 15 out of 25. All right, just 10 more homes need to be upgraded. And it looks like they want uh, clothes and uh, shoes, so that'll increase happiness, too. I don't think that'll affect desirability, but they are telling us now it's time to build a weaver and time to build a cobbler, which I agree with. We can definitely trade a lot of this stuff over here in the artisan district. 
So let's go ahead and uh, maybe we'll just make a road here to kind of separate that district a little bit. Cool. All right, we'll kind of try to separate that from the uh, residential area. Make a buffer zone here too. Although the artisan area, not bad. People don't mind living next to the clay potter or the glass maker or the uh, candlestick maker. All right, so the only thing that prevents us from doing that now is a lack of labor, which we're at 20. So we could probably get away with building one more building. The cobbler seems like a pretty good one to start with since we've got that going. Uh, and we'll wait a few years for flax storage to increase. But pelts are the only thing needed for the cobbler. I would argue that uh, the tannery is something that's required beforehand. There is a tannery in the game, uh, but it doesn't... Yeah, the cobbler can just make it from pelts, so they must do their own... Uh, tanning for whatever whatever leather type shoes that they make or whatever they need to make it, whether it's the sole of the shoe or, or whatnot, um, they can do it all themselves. So some buildings are completely self-sufficient, like for example the tailor or the weaver. Not only does the weaver weave uh, like flax into linen fabric, but they can also make clothing from it, so it's a good thing that it's a two-in-one. So the flax is just directly delivered to the weaver and out comes clothes, so that's great. And it's the same for the um, for the cobbler. Pelts go in, leather shoes come out, so they can also make the hand leather that way. Very nice. All right, we just need to make some cash to finish that park. Desirability will skyrocket in the town, and then we just need to work on the farm. So remaining tasks are to wait for the farms to uh, continue to be built so we can diversify our food groups and get everybody's happiness up for the homesteads. Homesteads are 15 out of 25. Ten more homes, and we got it. We'll be into Tier 4, Tier 3, on to Tier 4 pretty soon. So Tier 3 is next, and on to 4. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining here today. You guys have been amazing. I am excited that trade is up now, and our city is stronger than ever. We'll uh, get some more houses upgraded, and we'll be on to Tier 4 very soon. 3 is next. Here it comes. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everyone.